Welcome to today's webinar about Justice 40 and data tracking and reporting in Hancock. I am going to record the webinar and I will send it out um, if you had registered or attended. Um, and then you can, if you know of anybody that wants to listen to it, we can distribute it. You can distribute it from there. Uh, so this is like a, a small group. Um, mainly it is our Hancock's existing agencies. Maybe some agencies that don't use Hancock are here, but Hancock's existing agencies and states. Uh, so I wanted to make this as interactive as possible. As we all know, like part of our weatherization workflow will include tracking um, Justice 40 information for funding sources that you're probably already using. Uh, so to begin the webinar, the initiative from the federal initiative um, includes that they kind of highlight a couple funding sources that your agencies may already be using. It says that the Justice 40 initiative is a national commitment to environmental justice. Uh, so it is making sure uh, that your households are being served in disadvantaged communities, that a certain number, you know, 40% of your households are being served in disadvantaged communities. And uh, it highlights a few of the recent uh, funding sources that you may actually already be using, like obviously the, the uh, bill money that many of the states across that implement DOE have already started to use for a little while. Uh, and then the Inflation Reduction Act. Um, I don't know if your agencies or states are directly affected by this, but uh, a lot of energy efficiency money is funding is bundled into the Inflation Reduction Act and targeting low income households. This These are run through the state energy office, so it is probably not it might not be your con your state agency. Your ag state agency might do both, but it might not. Um, and finally, the American Rescue Plan that um, you all are familiar with. So in a discussion where how do we make sure that you can serve disadvantaged communities like this, um, we look at the requirement so here i will send this uh i will send this url out after the webinars with part with the recording but it is a climate and economic justice screening tool um, where you can select your area and you can see where the disadvantaged communities are so it's an interactive map you can search by address um, or you can just drill down and see it but separately, they do have a downloads page here that um, gives you information about uh, where these communities are. So when I look at the downloads page, I think I put it here, and you don't have to look, um, you know, my guinea pig for this is going to be Maine. Hi, Maine. Amanda, I see you there. I don't know if I see Brad. So let me, Amanda, I'm going to try to unmute you really quick. Amanda's Brad with you. You're unmuted. The whole team's together. Oh, lucky. Brad, I thought you stood me up. Nope, I'm here. I didn't okay. realize I was already late. You started. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> okay, so there are about 17 of us right now in this webinar. I didn't like blast it to every possible person because I thought it would be better to have a discussion with Hancock's customers and people interested in Hancock and then share it to the broader audience if you know if it's relevant. So Brad, you actually pointed me to this uh, site and thing. So what, tell us like what Maine is doing, what you know, what your timelines are about Justice right. 40 and well, what I mean, you're I think most states know this was something that went in, you, with 40% of our funds being spent in a Justice 40 community, that has been in existence for a while and it's just really coming to light now and going to you know we need to we need and we need to ultimately track it and report on it um I, it's still kind of up in the air with doe as to what we are going to need but you know we're being told from our project officer that it's probably going to be as simple as um reporting on the number of units and the dollar cost 
So, you know, right now we're going by that. So we are, we look at, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing in Hancock that currently allows us to designate whether it's a J40 community or not. So we're, we're thinking we need some sort of avenue to designate um, a WAP job that is in a deal in, in a J40 community. Um, and then we can report from there, you know, be able to pull a report with everybody that's checked off as J40 or something like that. And then, you know, get a, and a report that will show us, you know, a breakdown of the dollars that uh, went into each of those communities. And we want it within the Hancock software, because we use Hancock from start to finish. We don't use any other databases, any other software. So for us, it's important that we are able to use Hancock to do this. Um, I, I don't, I haven't talked to any other states. I don't know what they're doing, but you know, this was our first step because we're already behind the eight ball. We have gone through our, our you know, we went through Hancock, we went through every job that we have done for the last two program years. And, you know, we definitely meet um, the 40% requirement just in our normal process of um, the priorities that we have. Um, so we know we're meeting that, but we're gonna, we need to be able to report on it. Okay. And I know a lot of the states had emailed me like, is this recorded? So a couple can't attend, but I do see a lot of attendees from New Jersey. Um, Brittany, you're from the state there. Do you have anything to add on? I'm gonna unmute you. If you can have a microphone, do you have anything to add of what your state, what's the temperature check at your state as far as Justice 40? Are you guys being, is this on your radar as well? Hi, I do nothing with any of this. Angie <laughs> requested that I sit here and take notes on it. So I have nothing of value to add. Okay, but I will send this recording to you. So um, okay. I'll add maybe a summary section too. That is absolutely fine. Um, and then Melanie, I see Pennsylvania is on here too. Melanie, are you guys, do you guys have Justice 40 on your radar? And you're unmuted too. It's on our radar, but we haven't done the extensive research that Maine has. So it sounds like, Brad, yeah, Brad, it sounds like you kind of went back, found job served, looked up and saw, saw if they're in disadvantaged communities and proved that they are. Correct. We were like a little, we're like, oh, we're behind the eight ball on this. You know, this has already previously started. You know, it started last year. We know we met the requirement. We went job by job, pulled up the map, put in the address, pulled up the map, recorded it ourselves, whether it was J40 or not. So, you know, we did that to make sure we were meeting it. So now that we know that we, we weren't sure if we were needed or not, just in our normal process, and it's close, so you know we do want to be able to make sure we meet that, and not just rely on the last two years. We were, we met it, but just barely. So um, yeah. No, yes, we, we we and our plan is is that we would like to have something in the software that we can denote that it's a J40 area, and our plan is on each job so that we know that it is in fact a J40, if we were to look at the job, we're going to require a screenshot uh, of, the, of the map with that address on it, and with this on the side saying that it's a J40 area on each uh, J40 job. So we do have the backup documentation that it is um, it's in J40. Okay. And you know, um, if you're not familiar with Hancock, um, I do like to get everybody on the same page. So when we do this, it's one and it applies to everybody. Um, at the same time, like Melanie spoke from Pennsylvania, her state is looking to move to our newer platform. Everybody's gonna move over. So I'm gonna show both. So I'm gonna show this in the existing platform um, and the new platform, Hancock Cloud. And we have a couple of options here. So, you know, here, like for example, these census track numbers are really what determines a disadvantaged community. This is from the exported list. Um, I took an example site here, and we open one of these uh, one of these guys here. Let me just open somebody that I, think I can open any of this. 
Uh, we do have the ability in both the new system and this system, this interface, to uh, designate new fields, new fields. So it, within, um, I thought I put it in application, let me see. This is written over. So what we can do is we can put, um, oh, so I just put census track here. So we have a couple options. Uh, Brad, you kind of suggested a checkbox. So like, for example, reweatherization is a checkbox. The problem with a checkbox though, is we don't make, you can't make a checkbox required. Like if this said justice 40, we can't make someone check it. And we don't know if they meant to uncheck it, like leave it unchecked, or if they didn't even see the field. So we have, uh, what would be the best would it be either a pick list. So the pick list can be like a question that says, is this justice 40, yes or no? Or we can add, um, we can make the user put the census track number in. So we can make that user look up the census track and put it in if you ever need information like that. So Brad, what is your initial reaction to those three options? Um, I, I like the box that she has to know. That sounds uh, super simple because they're going to get the census track where so on that one you were just showing us we can see the census track but how does that where does that relate to that that census track is the j40 well oh right so this looks like you what do you mean so the list yeah. of disadvantaged communities are given by this census track 2010 id right we we're pulling a report how would we identify those that fall into that community? Well, the idea, this is up for discussion, but the idea is, you know, if you go into Hancock's reporting module, um, we could add this to a report that you guys commonly pull for completions. And I mean, what comes to my mind is that completed the job list report. So I think Brad and I, what you and I have, uh, reviewed before is in here there is a job list and you can say um, I want to target completed date um, yeah. or a, a lot of states consider that last inspection date to be their completion date so whatever um, and then this is probably I assume this is older data in here so let me say I backdate this and then you can highlight you know the bill money i don't even yeah. know if bills this is a right. test site. i don't even know if bill stuff's going to be in here but you can go check like what are those qualifying is D regular doe is part of this too yeah any doe yeah, yeah. um and then you said circ maybe did you yeah. see yes. they don't have that but that's for you yeah um and you can do it by funding source, but maybe just last name. Right. And then we could add the column. I might have an old one on my computer. You know, we can add the column here. Right. Um, but my, my for that. More so was on those numbers that you know you that show that it's J40 census tract. How do we relate that to an address? We don't, what do we, don't we need to go to the one that has the map on it and, you know, look up the address and then that will, you know, give us a census tract number. Is that how we would find it? Yeah. So do you want users to have to do that? And if you don't want users to have to actually look at the census tract number, um, that's the only way they would really know, right? Right, right. Yeah. So if you don't want users to look at the census tract number, then maybe you just put yes or no. Right. Is so I'm feeling like if they have to go do that number, check that, check that, get the number from there, and then input it into um, that that um, field, it just leaves rooms for error, and it's really kind of unneeded. If we're just they gotta look at it anyways, they might as well check yes or no because 
we are going to require that they put the backup in the WAP documents that, you know, the map and showing that that address um, is a J40 community. So I think for us, probably just a checkbox which would be the easiest. Um, you know, the more we add on for um, data entry, the angrier they get at us. So if but you're going to make them do this anyway, right? You said you're going to require yes, that. Yes, they're going to do, do that. But I think they have to, you know, put data into another field versus a checkbox. Yeah, they'd rather have a checkbox. Uh, yes or no, you mean, right? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, yes yeah. or no. Um, does anybody else have thoughts? And I can would love to unmute, but I can't find my unmute button. So you can raise your hand. Let me minimize everything here. Yeah, so go to is real. I suddenly don't have that unmute button from go to. Um, okay, and then let's look at the equivalent of this uh, when everybody, you know, Brad, you're eventually going to use the new. Um, system the new software also uh main will move over to that platform so when we log into there let's say a requirement like this comes up um what can you do to support it quickly so brad in your case if you didn't want to wait for me to have this meeting get everybody's feedback um, in the new software there is an intake template here so the menu, instead of being on the left, like uh, what a lot of you use today, it flows at the top. And there's an intake template here for weatherization where you can see a list of all the fields. And if, let's say, the fields you use are selected as yes. But the fields that are in Hancock that you don't use right now are selected as no. And then you can say, well, I want a pick list here. So I want a drop down list. Which fields does Hancock have available that I'm not using um, that are a pick list? And you can just take one of these. So, you know, maybe you take this this uh, this example state isn't using the field. How did the client hear about the program? So you can take that and you can rename it. Uh, to what you'd want. So here the, you could rename it to um, is that household, what do you say, eligible for Justice 40 or what? how do you say that? Maybe you just put Justice 40. Yeah, Justice 40 or J, yeah, J40 community okay. or something like that. And you can decide where you want it to show in your application, like what section, application, client info. It probably belongs not in contact and application and where it appears. Um, and that was something where I originally, this field was how did the client hear about the program? Then you can go to configuration and you can configure the pick list values. So here, if I look for um, ways of hearing about the program, um, I can set this pick list value to yes or no, for example. Uh, so, or you can set it up as a question. So in the new system, you know, you do have a configuration um, ability to define questions and you can just create a question. And then uh, in the newer platform, there's an export data screen here where if it's a question or whatever it is, right. you can go here, you can export any single data type. So Brad, it's kind of like what you're asking for right now, right? You can export right. any data field and the answer to it. Um, so it would be like much easier for you to right. quickly meet the requirement. So I think what we'll do for the states that are attending, like the, the states that use the new platform, I think what Hancock will do is we'll mock up a configuration for them. And if everybody says, oh, yeah, this is what we like, um, we can put that in everybody's new platform site. But for this one, 
it sounds like we're all kind of in agreement that we will put a yes or no pick list and we'll, we'll add it to that job list report that shows here. And then right. you'll just adjust this 40 yes or no. Yeah. And I think this total, does this total information? Um, oh, it totals by just the, co the costs and everything. Yeah. And from what we understand, you know, there's nothing final on the reporting requirements, but, you know, obviously that would be a minimum. And it sounds like they're going to go to just a bare minimum, but, you know, it might need to be able to be um, grown upon, you know, as final reporting requirements come out. But, you know, starting off with just the minimal how many units and the dollar amounts that went to those uh, that community. Okay. Um, is there any other topics you want to bring up? Uh, I know Pennsylvania, they had given us this deferral tracking sheet and maybe another state did too from DOE. And then one state told me, maybe it was Kentucky that told me, DOE hasn't talked about deferral tracking ever since they sent that WPN. Um, is everything okay, Brad, with your yeah. deferral tracking in Maine so far? Um, yeah, we were actually using that sheet and, you know, we actually modified it a little more than what DOE had on it for what our, our use. Um, so we are ready to submit a report on it if we need to. And we're, it's a big help using the um, readiness funds, you know, they, we, we do track the readiness funds on there. They have some, our partners submitted to us on a quarterly basis at this point, and you know, we're able to see the life of the job uh, completed on that one form. And also, Great. you know, how long deferrals and their different reasons, and you know, we were able to see why did you choose this one for readiness versus another one. You know, it's able to for us to manage the program a little better, make sure that funds are being used appropriately. Great. So um, I assume that this webinar like wouldn't last too long. I think we're fine to wrap it up. And as the next steps, I'll send out a summary to everybody with the recording and then um, a general timeline of when we'll have this in each of the new Hancock Cloud and the existing one. I have one more question. Mm -hmm. is, there, would there, is there going to be, or can you look in, would there be a way that we would be able to go back to Justin? Completed and paid to be able to note them as a J40 community, whether that's at your level or you know you do something behind the scenes so that you know we can go back to when this requirement came into play. And um, yeah, that's a good question. All the ones that we have currently in process until this is uh, released to be able to designate them J40. We have a program option that says. Um, allow editing client info for invoiced jobs so if we you have, have that, um we have it now i don't know if i have it in your version if you haven't um, upgraded in a while but okay. we can check and that's a simple upgrade okay. so if you check that on it's really like no harm letting people invoice client info stuff right after some right. things invoice right. so you can decide whether you turn it on and off or people just leave it on yeah okay. and that would enable you to do that Great to know. okay um we have like a webinar lineup coming up um i will send out that also to everybody um so you don't miss any emails and then we have a new spot on the uh on the website webinars here that uh list the news and the past webinars also okay thank you all so much for your attention brad thank you for making this yeah, webinar less more interesting thank you very yeah. much all, all right. right bye